Well, hello, that's me again. Today is May 24th. It is Wednesday. And let's get to our goals, so to speak, without any further procrastination. And we will start with um, something which is really uh, very interesting about the fact that uh, the so-called uh, raid by the what is called DRG in Russian, DR, which is the Diversionary Recon Group, uh, was obviously the attempt to cover up the situation with Bakhmut Artemovsk, which has fallen, and it was pretty much expected, so this is not biggie, really. And when you look at this, and you have now the response from all kinds of the official um, uh, spokespeople in the United States saying that, oh, yeah, we don't know what kind of those, you know, photos and videos are. They could be fake. Yeah, sure. Russians usually do not fake those things. But you can see yourself the bunch of the imbeciles who uh, sadly wounded several people and uh, killed one person in um the uh, village near Belgrade, but here is, for example, the uh, United States is struggling to explain images of its destroyed hardware inside Russia. Uh, as they say, you know, we've seen some of the reports circulating on social media and elsewhere making claims that U.S. supplied weapons were used in these attacks. U.S. State Department spokesman Matthew Miller told reporters on Tuesday in Washington. I will say that we are skeptical at this time of the veracity of this report. Well, it's obviously kindergarten uh, level uh, denial, and obviously there are so many of the videos and photos of that uh, group which was trying to, as even stated on one of the destroyed vehicles, as you can see yourself, it actually has the for Bakhmut, you know, sign on it, and... Um, there are plenty of those uh, videos, how they managed to kill, which is still sad, uh, uh, sad um, really occasion, but how they managed to kill only one civilian, it's beyond me, but the point is all of them are goners, the, uh, some of them were taken prisoners, the rest have been annihilated. And uh, that was the, uh, as I already stated, the PR action, this is the only thing which... Um, armed forces of Ukraine are capable of now, and obviously some kind of uh, uh, attempt to obscure the situation with Bakhmut, which uh, stupid Western uh, media and uh, uh, Ukrainian media basically blew it out of proportion, the strategic importance. It is important, make no mistake. Uh, Bakhmut is, uh, or Artemovsk is important, uh, but again, it's just one of the pieces of the puzzle, so to speak, along the more than 1,000 kilometer long front. So, uh, yeah, uh, it's taken, and what they do, they begin to deny it, you know. So it's absolutely normal for this people to basically state uh, things opposite to their reality because that's how they live. And believe me, the most terrifying fact of all that is that they believe in themselves. But what can I say? And when you look attentively at those PR actions and the United States denying that it you, uh, it's... Uh, not part of the conflict. United States is a party of the to the conflict. It supplies weapons, it supplies hardware and intel. And in terms of supplying intel, United States is directly involved again, in war against Russia and Russian people. And as you can see yourself, the latest events today with uh, um, this um, ship, Ivan Hurs, it's uh, two uh, what is called middle uh, uh, size intelligent, uh, intelligence connect, uh, collecting ships. Uh, which have been attacked today. It was attacked today by the uh, un unnamed, uh, unmanned uh, surface uh, drones. Three of them, all three of them have been annihilated. And guess what? Because Hurs was operating on the northeast, 140 kilometers from the mouth of Bosphor Strait in the Black Sea, the only reason it could uh, and the only reason for Ukrainians attacking it was because immediate uh, uh, real-time intelligence sent to them by all kinds of the uh, air assets which fly from the Romanian territory and they immediately saw Ivan Hurs and they gave the uh, uh, targeting essentially. So well, uh, they failed at this, which is absolutely traditional and normal. You can see yourself how uh, Ivan 
horse defended itself. This is a really uh, nice looking ship for the uh, Intel con uh, collection, as you can see yourself. And it has the, uh, what is called the Sting uh, uh, artillery uh, uh, weapons. And uh, it primarily, it's not really that armed, really. It is the uh, intelligence ship. And again, its, uh, its task is to collect uh, signal intelligence. And yeah, it, it's okay. It did its job. And those, uh, what is called coming doors, people who operated artillery uh, units, they will have to obviously get some what is very valuable for any kind of the servicemen, additional uh, vacation, and pro probably will get some medal. So, and that's another, so to speak, PR action, and this is a desperate attempt to cover up what is going on with uh, armed forces of Ukraine having its ass being handed to them with the catastrophic losses for them. And obviously we know also that Mr. Zalushny was indeed wounded, and as today news, including kind of, you know, from uh, Ukrainian sources themselves, uh, he had the trepanation of his skull, that means boring the hole in his skull, and that means that, as many uh, informational agencies say now, uh, after this operation, uh, he wouldn't be able to perform any duties for forever. So, well, that basically tells that he's a vegetable, and we can only... I guess uh, how the uh, uh, political uh, military top of the armed forces of Ukraine has been decapitated, but you know what? Choose your weapon from Kinjal to Calibers to Onyx to what have you. So many options. And that brings us to the uh, uh, things which I really care about. That is why I really have uh, to say that I really don't like constantly discussing and commenting on the news. First, there are so many of them that I really kind of uh, lost in this quickening of the geopolitical situation. And there are so many opinions, you know, going around. Some of them great opinions, you know, just very competent. Others, they're pretty speculative. But let me uh, get you into something which uh, we need to talk about. And people would say, yeah, oh, that's military porn issue. Well, in some sense, it is military porn issue. But let me put it this way. Chinese, uh, Chinese, uh, who are visited by, now, by none other than Mr. Mishustin, the Russian Prime Minister. And he uh, already met with Mr. Litsan, who is the uh, Premier of the uh, State Council of China. And he assessed already the perspectives of the Russian-Chinese cooperation as stellar shining, brilliant. That's how uh, the type of the terms have been used. And uh, Mr. Mishustin, of course, uh, has a bigger issue, so to speak, to handle tomorrow because he will be accepted by Mr. Comrade Z. And we can only guess what will be discussed there. Obviously, Mishustin is in there to sign huge contracts ranging from transportation to energy to high tech to what have you. And there probably will be some other things which are discussed in terms of the military uh, issues and as you understand Mr. Shaigu being the defense minister he cannot uh, travel right now because he is busy with special military operation but Mr. Mishustin still has the higher uh, he is higher up anyway and being a prime minister he has a lot of uh, leverage so to speak to discuss a lot of issues pertaining the Russian Chinese uh, uh, cooperation. And speaking about this, this is what brings us to uh, basically what uh, Mr. Bruno Kahl, the one of the chiefs of the BND and the chief of the uh, Foreign Intelligence um, uh, Academy in Germany stated yesterday in his interview to Devalt and Bruno Kahl stated that basically after the 15 months there are no signs that Putin regime is you know failing or that Russia is failing in fact they have no problems with the personnel weapon stocks and everything of course he had to uh, the basically uh, mention after that that it doesn't mean that Russia will not collapse well of course uh, you can wait until they you know health is over, but other than that, even, you know, people like that begin to uh, speak up, even in their fully occupied and fully, uh, you know, vassalized to, to the point of being nothing more than the doormat for United States, Germany. So, the same as uh, today, one of the Bundeswehr generals, 
evidently maintaining the high honor and professionalism, General Marlow. He stated that he uh, and he uh, basically uh, submitted his re report on resignation when he stated that he when he saw who uh, Germany and Bundeswehr were training in terms of the Ukrainian forces, especially the guys who were very interested in the SS documentation and archives in terms of. Uh, torturing this is that's what they study and he submitted his resignation he said I can't I will not do that because these are war criminals basically well there we go we have people in Bundeswehr who do have honor who do have human and officer integrity and that kind of you know like warm feeling about that that not everything is lost there are people and those people with the integrity and human owner uh, and officer uh, professionalism, they usually create a lot of uh, positive field around themselves, which influences other people. So we cannot discount it as the some PR action. No, the general who basically Germany is a totalitarian state and uh, it's going to get even much worse. It is 1984 essentially. And uh, it takes a lot of uh, civil and human courage to do what this general uh, did. And this is, uh, we can only applaud him for his uh, humanity in the end but but as um going back to china we can see uh and that's what i like to talk about always because i love to talk about the issue of the real drive shafts of the conflicts and why for example mr peskov uh, stated that uh, those wet fantasies on some uh, even neocons about freezing of the conflict are nothing more than uh, wet fantasies. Russia is in it to get what she needs and she will get it. She's already getting it. And yesterday, actually today, we asked whether Russia was considering putting their fighting on hold. Peskov stated that Moscow is only considering the option of completing the special military operation, which means securing Russia's interest and achieving its goal, goals either through military or other available means. And that is pretty much the answer for anybody who wants to uh, speculate constantly that Kremlin would want to negotiate. No, Kremlin doesn't want to negotiate, at, at least not now. And again, the negotiations will be not only against Ukraine. We don't know if Ukraine will be or really uh, will really exist at that time. But we are talking about NATO and Europe. And now you have all those people who talk about, like you know, uh, Colonel McGregor had the meeting with the people from the uh, you know who scold us on strategy that Russia has to have to roll in Europe. Well, it's uh, not up to NATO or United States to decide if Russia will have role in Europe or not because the roles are not given. The roles are usually actually uh, earned and they earned by the fact of Russia being military and economic superpower and it doesn't matter who and whatever the European clowns want to say today. Fact is Russia by the very presence in the European continent will and is having a role and that's the whole uh, uh, issue because Macron's come and go, those boys, Scholz's come and go, but Russia remains and she defeated people for, uh, compared to whom Scholz and Macron are kindergarten kids and they are actually. So, and when we talk about this, including freezing, Chinese released in, in the China um, morning, uh, South Ch Ch uh, uh, what is the name of it, uh, South China Morning Post, I guess, uh, they uh, gamed their uh, uh, operations of the U.S. Navy in the South China, uh, South China Sea. And military planners conclude that Gerald R. Ford and its fleet could be destroyed with certainty in the rare published report. The researchers said 24 hypersonic anti-ship missiles were used to sink the U.S. Navy newest carrier and its group in 20 simulated battles. I wrote a number of books about it. It is a classic uh, missile exchange or Salva equation mod uh, modeling, basically. And yes, it doesn't matter, uh, uh, you know, whatever the United States has in terms of air defense. There, they will not stop as. You already saw yourself, uh, Mr. Kinjal demonstrated against the Patriot uh, Pack 3. It doesn't matter. There will be leakers. 
And liquors, as you know, is a fundamental issue of the missile exchange warfare, which is the modern warfare. It is all missile driven. It is all, most of it today, uh, with the exception of the close uh, combat by infantry. Most of it is standoff weapons. And when I say that the United States lost the arms race, I'm not talking about uh, some, uh, you know, super duper computer, because uh, at this stage, combat networks and computers were example between Russia and the United States does, do not have that much difference already. In fact, Russian uh, famous mathematics and algorithms and programming which go into the signal processing, targeting, detection and tracking of all kinds of the advanced radar and other sensor systems are top-notch and I'm talking arguably the best in the world, better than even American ones. And the empirical evidence, the uh, combat performance of Russian weapon system against uh, the, whatever you have there in terms of NATO supplying whatever weapons is outstanding. And the key to that is air defense. I'm not talking about just air force. I'm talking about air defense. And here we United States not even in the same league as Russia. And we're talking about not just years behind. We're talking about generations. Why I'm saying so? Okay, just to give you an example, the latest news, which is uh, very important to point out, uh, uh, if you look attentively, and you can easily find it, uh, here is the uh, deputy chief of the uh, production uh, department of the famous Obuchov plant in St. Petersburg, speaking yesterday, actually the day before yesterday, to uh, famous Vayenne uh, Priyomka, which is military acceptance uh, um, of the Zvezda uh, TV uh, channel, you can find it on YouTube, and it's in Russian, but he is talking about here, in this particular instance, Alexei Svetlov, about how they are satisfied with the performance of the what is called S-3500 Vitas air defense complex, and he is like, when asked how it performed, he said it performed brilliantly in the special military operation. This is one of the launchers of the S-350. No, this is not S-300, this is not S-400. It is a completely new middle, mid-range air defense system, which actually in serial production and has been procured in serial, uh, in serial numbers uh, starting from 2021. But, but the interesting thing about this is, of course, that Russians already started to say, which is uh, things of this nature. For example, they state like TASS on February, Russia's S-350 missile launcher outshines US Patriot, air defense system, says expert. Oh, believe me, it did outshine it to such a degree, there is no even comparison. And here it is. And here what is very interesting, the piece of information which is crucial for everything I'm about to tell you. The Patriot does not shoot down targets flying at an altitude of lower than 100 meters, which is 300 feet. Whereas the Vitas, which is the name of this uh, air defense complex, knocks out targets at an attitude of, altitude of 10 meters and higher. The expert stressed. And then he explains also uh, uh, how it happens and Izvestia, Izvestia, which is one of the prime Russian establishment media, the news, stated that actually S-350 Vitas first time shut down Ukrainian Air Force combat airplanes fully automatic regime. What is fully automatic regime? Well, in these systems, it's obviously the elements of the uh, um, uh, artificial intelligence, and what happens there is how they explain in this video, it was done completely without the participation of the operators, because Vitas conducted its uh, search, uh, the track, detection, and uh, uh, annihilation of the uh, air objects of the enemy. It was fully autonomous and um, 
uh, uh, the autonomous regime was uh, uh, realized in the principle which is called actually control by negation. And when basically you have operators and operators just sit and watch and do not interfere, unless of course they have to stop the procedure itself, then they interfere. Uh, but other than that, they negate their participation. And there you go. And already we have the uh, combat score of S350, which is extremely, extremely uh, impressive. And when you say, hmm, okay, that's the ground, you know, most people who are who didn't drink Kool-Aid and who have at least some basic education and critical thinking, they know that Russian air defense is just completely different level. The United States and NATO, they don't have anything like this even comparable. And uh, across the all kinds of the ranges and capabilities, be that short range, be that middle range, or be that, of course, long range, and let alone things which uh, can, uh, like uh, A235 Nudol or S500, which can reach uh, very high into the space. And not to speak about S-500, which is actually genuine anti-intercontinental ballistic missile uh, defense. And when you look at this and it's like, hmm, you know, uh, there is another thing about it. Because S-350 uh, has been around not only on the ground. And it has been around, when, which brings us back to the Chinese uh, paper published uh, two days ago about uh, the what is called required force of 24 uh, uh, hypersonic missiles. Which of them we don't know, but I would assume that, as I already stated, Mr. Shaigu and uh, Mis Minister of Defense of China, and now Mr. Mishustin in China, they did discuss the issue, for example, uh, Chinese getting probably Kinzhal. That's my speculation, but this is the speculation which you can quote me on. And if you look at 24 to sink the whole of the uh, carrier battle group, uh, so um, how do you stop those things which is, for example, United States has as its main strike weapons. And United States, mind you, doesn't have hypersonic weapons. It doesn't have even supersonic weapons. What do you want to do? And here's the issue. As you can see yourself, this is uh, one of the latest project uh, uh, 2385, uh, hyper, by the way, Zircon carriers, uh, uh, Corvettes. And uh, there are obviously the earlier versions of this, uh, less capable but still impressive Corvettes of the project 2380. This one is Grimashi. And if you look attentively at the, uh, what they carry, they carry actually the same S350, which is known actually is as Redoot. They carry them in a very funny uh, 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 combination so to speak and positioning on the ship here it is this is this project 23385 uh, shooting the redoot complex which is s350 novelized version and as you can see yourself the launch systems uh 16 of them are located that means their uh, ship can carry up to up to 48 different types of the air defense missiles and as you can see yourself it is uh, located aft uh you know on the both sides of the ship uh, near the helicopter han hangar and uh when you look at this uh and uh, earlier versions of the 2380 they have actually 12 launches but the most important part for the those corvettes 2385 uh, is this thing it's not only their pretty impressive missiles and i use here the uh, wikipedia data because it is correct data it is taken from the actual resources and as you can see yourself this is the variety of the missiles they carry and this is a redoot uh, and redoot is as you can see yourself the most important missile is 9m96 e2 which has the range of 120 kilo, uh, uh, kilometers it can shoot targets on the minimum altitude of five meters and actually as you can see yourself its speed is genuine Mach 5.5 those are hypersonic uh, weapons and uh, uh, when you look at this you begin to understand that even the uh, small frigate uh, uh, corvettes let alone frigates the class of Gorshkov who also carry the redoot but it is also the uh, in 
combination with their very capable uh, uh, AISA active uh, electronically scanned array uh, uh, polymand. Uh, on the core bands, you cannot put polymand there, which is Im amazing radar and basically just a robot also. What you do, you put the Zaslon, which is a stunning uh, air defense uh, radar. And if you look attentively from none other than Ron Abar uh, Rosa Baron expert, you can see what they carry. And the Zaslon, it's the outstanding radar on those Corvettes, which uh, will continue to be produced. And as you can see yourself, it operates simultaneously. It's kind of Aegis type thing, but it, it's um, it's kind of different, okay? Uh, and operate at several frequencies bands simultaneously, simultaneous control over electronic uh, countermeasure, air defense, and striking striking systems, and full automation of combat activities and substantial jamming immunity. It can detect targets at 300 kilometers, can track 50 uh, uh, targets and uh, detection range for in a passive mode up to 200 kilometers so when you look at this and you begin to understand that, that this corvette uh, for example which is project 2386 grimachi and the class of the ships which are coming out and some of those elements are already is, is, uh, installed on the earlier corvettes they represent a very impressive air defense capability capable to fight pretty much anything which could be thrown at them, any kind of the uh, weapon from the arsenal of NATO, and including the prospective uh, weapons, which may include some, I doubt they will get there, but eventually they might get something into serious supersonic and maybe a uh, lower hypersonic range. They are already ready. Those uh, ships, they are procured, they uh, started their service, and when you look at this, this is why I constantly say that, I mean, there is nothing comparable to this which could be put on any Western or American, well, first, Amer United States Navy doesn't have Corvettes to start with. But when you have those Corvettes, and especially Zircon carriers, we are talking about immense firepower. And um, what can I say? This is when uh, you have to constantly remind people, well, looking at capability which is simply unachievable by the modern West. And that is why I always state that, okay, even if you take the uh, separately, in isolation, the air defense systems, I mean, there's nothing there even remotely comparable, let alone comparable on the ship with the displacement of about two and a half thousand tons. And yes, this ship, in the displacement of two and a half thousand tons can basically repel quite a few uh, weapons thrown at it and of course it can strike back uh, with zircons or onyxes and that can yeah it can sink aircraft carrier and its group so this is the disparity and the capabilities which many people do not want to talk about and especially considering the fact that Mr. Cavoli spoke about it and uh, we know that there is something going on under the sea which again the you know we will have books written in the future about it meanwhile meanwhile we have to understand that United States is trying to uh, uh, escalate and I understand people's concerns but the point is they have to remember you can escalate you cannot really succeed in the escalation when you do not have escalation dominance NATO and the United States do not have escalation dominance. They can escalate, they can put F-16s, and guess what, last video I already kind of expounded on that, that uh, generally speaking, it doesn't matter, they will be shut down. If the American pilots will be flying them, good luck to them, you know? They will be shut down, they will be killed, and it doesn't matter when, for example, like Judge Napolitano asks, what's gonna happen if you have the, uh, basically, coffins coming uh, home? They will cover up. They will tell them that they died during training exercises or something like that. Do, do you know what happened to those, uh, basically, uh, Pac-3 Patriot crews? And I'm pretty sure there were NATO personnel there who were guarding them. They wouldn't allow Ukrainians to operate Patriot. 
So make your own, you know, make yourself your conclusions and why there are some requirements of, for the coffins and, uh, you know, things of this nature. It's all this a cover up now because United States, because it's run by lawyers, not legalistic. They run by lawyers and they do lawyering. They want to pretend that United States is not involved. United States involved fully. And I heard that people say, even Colonel McGregor, uh, they speculate that possibly they can get some troops into the Western Ukraine when the time comes to basically partition Ukraine and Western Ukraine will have to go to Poland. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't think so. Russia cares one way or another who comes in and that was already demonstrated uh, uh, to the full extent. And so in this case, we can only uh, count how many approximately or really NATO personnel and US, uh, not mercenaries, many of those mercenaries are actually undercover officers and servicemen of the US armed forces have been killed or maimed and uh, you know what this is the reality this is what neocons want that's what they will get and when you have what is called this horrendous i mean horrendous uh, and i cannot even emphasize enough the scale of the escalation dominance i mean sure let them try see what happens and this is what i wanted to tell you but before I go, here is the thing which even French have to admit. They show for some reason, though, the Russian servicemen uh, uh, graves. And of course, Russia definitely uh, loses some personnel, sadly, during this uh, special military operation. But even they admit that now the biggest secret of Ukraine is the actual number of killed in this operation, which is horrendous. Because, as you can see yourself, it is uh, highlighted in yellow. Up to 40 to 60 percent of those people, uh, Ukrainian servicemen who have been trained in France, and we're talking about tens of thousands of people, they are not on, uh, in communication anymore. People who train them, uh, people who know them personally, they cannot reach them anymore. They just do not respond, uh, respond anymore. And yeah, you can actually uh, very safely conclude that they are dead. And in this case, uh, Russia is not really hiding uh, its uh it's uh, KIAs and wounded, we know they do exist, but in Ukraine, they are hiding a horrendous reality. As I already stated, uh, as some people say, Russian MOD uh, gives uh, Artemovsk, uh, Bakhmut about above 50,000 KIAs alone, so you can multiply it by three, we have even if you multiply by two. So in Bakhmut alone, that uh, armed forces of Ukraine lost uh, casualties, about 150,000. So, and uh, when you look at this, yeah, I'm pretty sure that those generals in Pentagon has their, have their jaws on the ground. They never encounter anything like this. And this is just the warning to those who still exercise desire to, like Mr. Petraeus, who of course never won anything in his life, and uh, if they want to try to I interfere into the Western Ukraine, well, they might experience very similar things. And this is what I wanted to tell you today. And uh, as always, guys, uh, those who like what I do, please subscribe to my channel. And those who can afford, please support me on the Patreon or buy me a coffee or two. I really appreciate your support, guys. I really do. So this is it for today and I'll talk to you later. Have a nice rest of the week. Bye-bye.